Hi everyone, Megan here from Beguiled by Books, and today I've got some of my favorite books that you should read if you're a casual reader. Let's get started. I fully recognize that not everyone is going to read 100 books or 50 books or even 25 books in a year. So if you're just a very casual reader and you've got lots of other things going on in your life, that's awesome. But how do you find what books you should read? I've got some of my absolute long-term favorite books that I would recommend for anyone who's looking for a, a casual read or someone who just doesn't read a lot and needs help choosing. My very first book that I would recommend is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This book has staying power. I read this, I don't know, 2018, 2019, 2020, somewhere in there, a long time ago, and it still sits with me. I still think about certain quotes from that book. I think about the story regularly. It was beautiful. I cried. I laughed. It is just such a beautiful book and will warm your heart, break your heart. It just does all the things and it does it so well. So I highly, highly recommend The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue to any casual reader who's just looking for maybe a few books to read a year. Another book that I would recommend in that same vein is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I, again, loved this book. It was fairly short, so it was a nice uh, low maintenance book to get through. And it goes through a lovely story of a woman who doesn't really know what to do with her life and gets to live out different versions of how her life could have played out through this kind of magical midnight library. And I won't say too much more because I don't want to spoil anything, but it was a beautiful, wholesome story that's all about acceptance and really taking, uh, having appreciation for where you are in the moment in time, because that is where you're meant to be. Beautiful story. Fabulous for anyone who is, again, a casual reader. If you are a casual fantasy reader, I would absolutely recommend The House Witch and The Burning Witch series by Delam Hawk. So the, it is multiple books, uh, which may be less than ideal for a very casual reader. But if you're looking for a fantasy or a series that is just wholesome and will warm your heart and make you feel good about the world, The House Witch and Burning Witch, there are just lovely books, just absolutely again, wholesome and warm and cozy books that I recommend. And they're easy. You can get through them really quickly. Great to bring with you on, you know, a vacation trip or something like that. You'll easily go through them wherever you are. Wonderful books. My next book recommendation for my casual readers is going to be The Wishing Game. And I got this book really super randomly as an ARC fell in love with this. It is just such a sweet story about, you know, found family and kind of childhood wonderment. It's so beautiful and will awaken the child within you if that child has been uh, buried or sleeping for a little while while we're all out here adulting. So The Wishing Game is so wonderful. And the author has another uh, standalone novel coming out later in 2024 that I'm very excited to read. Another book for casual readers is The House in the Cerulean Sea, and this book absolutely is on the top of my favorites list. It's so beautiful, and it's about just kind of these misfit magical children and why they're outcast from society and how this very rigid government employee encounters them and how they change his world. And it's so sweet and satisfying and absolutely loved it. It is so delightful. And again, another really quick read. It's a standalone novel, so you can read it, start to finish, be done with it. The House in the Cerulean Sea, 100% recommend. Another great book for my casual readers who are interested in maybe a little bit of uh, magical realism is going to be In the Shadow Garden by Liz Parker. And this book was such an interesting premise. I loved the magic system in it, but there is a met, you know, a town in Kentucky with a lot of magic in it and two main families who are very prominent in the community. And the Haywoods have the magic. They read tea leaves. They have a great little herbalism shop and they help heal 
people's trauma and bad memories by almost removing it from them and planting that into their magical shadow garden where plants grow very uniquely. And then they have another family, the Bonners, who are the big bourbon town people. They've got a great distillery. And the mystery that unfolds is 20 years in the making, absolutely riveting. And I really hope she writes another book. I'm super excited for you to read In the Shadow Garden. And I will have a reading guide for In the Shadow Garden coming out very soon. I will post a link below for those reading guides so you can check those out if you want to do those for like a book club or anything like that. If you're a casual reader, but you're wanting something a little bit more nonfiction, I would absolutely recommend Educated. This was a memoir that blew me out of the water. Uh, the author grew up in a very fundamentalist um, home in Idaho and got a scholarship to go to college and then on to Oxford. And she really had to walk through her life from this fundamentalist, isolated upbringing into the world of college and others who had been publicly schooled versus she was homeschooled. Um, even things that were brand new to her, like going to a doctor, getting flu shots, things like that. And then on to Oxford and additional education and how that really shaped her life and shaped her relationship with her childhood and her upbringing. It is an absolutely breathtaking memoir and truly beautifully written, excellent prose and a fabulous story. So highly recommend Tara Westover's Educated if you want something in the nonfiction space, but you're a casual reader. In the nonfiction space, I would also recommend Wintering and Enchantment by Catherine May. Both books are wonderful. You can pick one or the other or read both. They are different. They do not necessarily relate to one another. So there's no reason uh, to feel guilty if you want to read one and not the other. Wintering is all about that retreat, that internal retreat that most people want to take in that in that winter phase, kind of that hibernation that we all seek and how certain events in life may cause us to go into that hibernation and want to retreat further into ourselves and how we can cope with those things. Really beautiful um, wording, love the cadence of Catherine May's writing. And of course the premise is really important because we all need to take time for ourselves to process whatever we're going through so that we can be the best versions of ourselves when we're out in the world. Enchantment, on the other hand, is all about seeing the world through almost a childlike way, seeing the wonder and the beauty in the most mundane things every single day. And I love both of these books for very different reasons, but they're both super great if you are interested in a casual nonfiction read. The next book, if you are interested in a leadership style book, I would recommend is Essentialism. Essentialism is going to help whether you're looking at the workplace kind of nonfiction or just improving yourself. Again, I put it in the leadership category and Essentialism focuses on exactly that. What is essential? With so many things coming at us at a daily basis, we've got emails, we've got texts, we've got social media, we have television, we have books that we want to read, we've got a family, we've got so much is always happening around us. How do we deal with that? And how do we prioritize what's important? And the author really digs into what is essential. What is essential for me to do, for me to be happy, for me to live my best life? And then we'll put everything else to the side, not deal with that right now. What is essential? unravel this crazy web that we have woven around us and get to the heart of the matters. I think essentialism is one of those books that really stands the test of time. It's great in business settings. It's great for individuals. It's great for families. It's a wonderfully done book. And again, it's short, easy to get through and has actionable outcomes. Those are some of my favorite books for casual reading and casual readers. What are some that I left off my list? I would love to know what books you are reading if you're a casual reader. So please drop a comment below and let me know. And as always, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Have a great day.